uh, welcome to a uh, women who code uh, introduction to Django session. Today we have uh, Mr. Anur Sharma who will be uh, walking us through the uh, session. Uh, Anuj, can you please start sharing this screen? Yes, thank you. All right, so I'm sharing my screen. Hope you can see uh, my VS code. And there you can see my slide. And let's start from here. Yeah. So welcome everyone to introduction to Django. So I want to know first, like how many of you know Python? Let me know in the chat. How many of you know Python? Okay. Uh, okay, great. Nice. And how many of you know, uh, like, have you ever done HTML and CSS? Oh, great. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Okay. That's great. Okay. All right. So we are going to create a web application and, and okay. So I'm sharing my screen and I'm also speaking. Okay. So if any time um, I'm not audible or you, you are unable to see my screen, just let me know in the chat. And uh, if you have any questions or any confusion, also please uh, write down in the chat. Okay. So if you have worked with like HTML and CSS, okay. You know that once you have created your web page, it is a static web page. Okay. If you want to change it, then you need to open your HTML and CSS, and then you need to code your stuff there, HTML and CSS. But with the Django, and Django is a Python framework. And when I say framework, uh, no need to like worry about like what is a framework. Framework is just like uh it's like bunch of files or you can or you can think of like the modules okay so it really help it like sort of it gives us sort of structure okay and using that structure i can make my um i can make a web application okay and i can change the content from back end okay i i won't be uh there won't be any need to open your html and css okay i can do i can do all those things dynamically all right, and when I say quickly, I really meant quickly because uh, Django gives us the ability to interact with database out of the box. We don't need to do anything. We don't need to install anything. We can, uh, we just need to know how to use it. And uh, it is named after this person, Django. All right, so. Let me change my slide. Okay, cool. And if you are on Linux, Mac OS or Windows, you can install Django. It is absolutely free. You don't need to pay anything. There is no license fee. And uh, I encourage you to use Django latest version, okay? Because of the security and because of like the edit features there. And you can use any editor with Python support. I use VS code. All right. And uh, you don't need to do like if you if you understand what is a list, what is a dictionary and what uh, what are Python functions. OK, then you're good to know that how to import functions in your um, how to import modules, all those things. All right. So, OK, so you need to know at least, okay? I'm not saying that you need to be expert in Python or be in HTML on CSS or maybe in the database, okay? You would able to understand most of the things, okay? And if, uh, and if not, I can explain. So just let me know in the chat. All right. So, okay. Uh, I will share the slide and then you can read it. Uh, then you can read after it. Okay. I encourage you not to read my slide. Okay. Just focus on what I, whatever I'm saying and when I'm uh, sharing my VS code. Okay. So focus there. Don't read my slides. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do, I hope you can see uh, my, what do you, okay, my VS code. Okay. So you see my blank VS code. 
and sorry. Okay. All right. So I am I am here in my index.py. I'll I will also close this. Okay. So the first thing I would do in my VS Code is that I'll come here, open folder, and now I I am in I am here in downloads. Okay. So there I'm gonna create a folder. Okay. So I'm just creating a folder. Maybe like it is not uh it doesn't look um so I'm gonna say learn and Django. So I just created a folder and now I will select this folder. Now you can see the name of the folder is here, learn Django. Okay. And okay. So the first thing you would you should do is to create a uh, like virtual environment. Okay. Why do we need why do we need that? We can work without virtual environment. Okay. But there are there there are multiple versions of Django. Okay. And there are also multiple versions of Python. Okay. So if I install my Django and Python in my C drive, in my like my master drive, okay then it will affect like all of my uh, projects okay maybe i'm working on different projects okay so we don't want that so so what we would do we will create a virtual environment and that we will um install python and in that we will also install our django okay and so how do we do that uh so you can come here like this and open terminal okay so Okay, hope you can see. So the first thing is I'm here, learn Django. Now I'm gonna write Python space dash M and then virtual environment. Okay, you need to write, you need to write like this. Okay, I'm not making this up. And then after this, you will mention the name of your folder. It could be really anything, your name, my name. Okay, but that doesn't uh, really make any sense if someone else is uh, going through our files. Okay, so I'm gonna call this environment. Okay, and when I hit enter, just one sec, I didn't hit enter. So when I hit enter, you will see something here. Okay, you can see there is a folder uh, environment. Okay, and let's wait for, we are installing files there. Okay, done, cool. So when I open this, you will see these files include library scripts, okay? You don't need to worry about that, okay? You just need to know how to use them, okay? So as I say, like to be a, like if you want to be a good cook, okay? You don't need to be a good farmer, okay? You don't need to know how to grow things. You just need to know how to use these things. All right, so now I am here in my virtual environment. So the first thing I should do is to activate my virtual environment, okay? So how to do that? You, I will do something like this CD. And in the CD, I need to come here in scripts. So I'm gonna call, I'm gonna say, so the first thing is that I'm in this folder, learn Django. So environment and then scripts, okay? CD space environment scripts. And when I hit enter, now I am uh, I am in this folder, and now I'm gonna do activate. There you go. Ah, good. Um, okay, nice. Yeah, you can use like most of them are like um, independent. Okay, but most of them uh, like some of them are specific to Windows. Okay. Uh, in my slide, you will see those. Uh, that like if you want if you are using mac os there you will see commands for mac os in my slide okay and uh, let me show you my slide okay if you are wondering so in my slide you have like uh, i wrote like this like for the mac you need to do this for windows you need to do this okay and you will have everything like this so you don't need to take screenshots okay you just need to uh, do, and also don't code along with me just like have a notebook uh, and write it down whatever you uh, find uh, important and then like later on you can go to our YouTube uh, go to like a woman who code YouTube channel and there you can like uh, code along so let me go back so okay so here I am so I'm in uh, scripts and as you can see here okay 
let me do CLS. So I have this thing, okay, in brackets, in parentheses, environment. Yeah, sure. Sure. Um, I'll share the slides. Uh, so, okay, now my virtual environment is activated, okay? Now I want to install Python. So how do I do that? So as you can see, um, I will say PIP pip, okay? Pip is a Python package manager, okay? Just like we have uh, App Store and Play Store in our mobile phone. And if I want to install any application, I go to that store okay so if i want to if i want to install any module in python i will do this pip so now pips install and then i will say django okay i'll wait for some time and you will see something here okay let's wait for some time and okay So we are installing um, Django. Okay, cool. So Django is now installed in our system. So CLS. So in Windows to clear my terminal, I use, I use CLS, okay? So now I'm here. Now I want to come here and learn Django, okay? I want to go out of this. So what do I need to do? I'll do this, okay? So now I am in this uh, folder called Learn Django, okay? So now I'm gonna do something. Um, let's say I want to create, uh, I want to start a project, okay? Now I have uh, Python installed. Okay, uh, do you have to install Python and Django for each project or can you import them? Um, yeah, I'm explaining all those things. So I'm in this folder, learn Django, okay? So the first thing you would do, okay? So first of all, I want to create a project, okay? So how do I do that? So now I can call this um, Django. I have access to this Django admin, okay? And after saying this Django admin, I will write this start project, okay? So Django admin start project, you need to write as like this, okay? And then uh, you will name your project, okay? So let's say for example, I write woman who code, okay, WW code. And now I will hit enter. Okay, okay. So now I'll come here. And in here you will see uh, now in my learn Django, um, folder, I have two things, environment, you don't need to worry about that environment, you need to focus here in WW code, okay, women who code folder. So we created a project. And in this project, I have this folder women who code, okay. And I have this file manage.py. And now I also have this thing, settings.py, urls.py, and all these files, okay. I will uh, I will explain them one by one, okay? Although you don't need to like, uh, you don't need to worry about all these files specifically. What are, what are these? So in the, uh, so let's talk about uh, settings.py. So in settings.py, we have basic things like time zones, other application installed uh, in the project. And when I say other applications, I'll explain uh, what is this and what is urls.py. So basically like we will put addresses, okay? Like uh, uh, www.womenwhocode.com slash something, okay? So we will make, we will keep all these URLs here, okay? Sort of addresses. And in this WSGI file, um, it helps us to deploy our application uh, to a web server, okay? We will use that, but we are not going to use that uh, today. And uh, yeah, so, okay. So I created a project like this, okay. Now how to run my server, okay. So Python, okay, so Python. So the first thing you should do before you do that, you need to do this change disk and I will write woman who code. Now I am in this directory, woman who code, all right. 
and when I am here, uh, I'm in this folder, okay? So that I can access this manage.py file, okay? So I'm gonna call this file uh, Python. The name of the file is manage.py and I want to run the server. So I'll say run server. And when you when I hit enter, you will see something come up. Okay, so you can, uh, you will get this thing, okay? So, okay, all you need to focus is here. So just click and then you will see this thing, okay? So that means like uh, we installed Django successfully and we have this web page, okay? Um, so yeah, now, okay, so of course we want to change that, okay? So the thing is, whenever we create any uh, project, okay? So Django is like highly opinionated, okay? So whenever you create a project, okay? Django says that if you want to, um, uh, you should like keep your things in separate applications, okay? So let's say for example, in Women Who Code, we have different, uh, uh, they have different tracks, okay? Like uh, Women Who Code Frontend, Women Who Code Blockchain, Women Who Code um, um, Data Science, okay? So you can think like that, okay? So we have this like big project and and if I say www.womenwhocode.com, slash women who code Python, okay? Something like that. And women who code, um, uh, let's say data science or blockchain, okay, like that. So I want to do that, okay? So the first thing I would do, okay? So first I created a virtual environment, then I installed uh, Django, then I created a project. And after creating the project, I ran my server, okay? Now, I now here you can see. So how do I close my server? Control C, okay? CLS to clear my screen. Now I am here. Now I want to do something here, which is I'm gonna call this uh, Python manage dot pi, and I'm gonna say start app, okay? And the name of my app is going to be Women Who Code. Uh, directories, a uh, woman who code Python. Okay. So the name of my application is woman who, uh, woman who code Python. Okay. It could be really anything. So I have like one project and you can think, uh, the project, like, uh, let's say, for example, uh, the project is Google. Okay. And in the Google, we have different applications like Google email, Google images, and, uh, Google photos and slides and the docs, all those things. So in the same way, I'm creating my first application. Now I hit enter. And when I hit enter, and if I come here, you will see something, okay? So now you can see that I have another folder and it is www code Python, okay? So let's open this, okay? So we have views, test models, application, and this. Now, uh, the, so the first thing I should do when I create any application, I should tell my woman who code project that look, I have this application and I need to register this application, okay? So I need to register my application here in settings.py and I'll come here and there you can see install application, okay? So I want to register my application. So how do I do that? Uh, I'll have my speech mark circulation, whatever you say, uh, www code Python, okay? And there you go, okay? So as you know that this is a list and in the list, I registered my application, okay? So yeah, all right. So, okay, now let's come here. So I registered my application. Why do I do that? Because let's say, again, if someone is visiting our web application, women who code.com slash women who code Python. So my, like the, the, uh, the WW code project should know that I have this application, okay, there. So. Now I'll come here and uh, 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 and views.py, okay? So the first thing, um, I want to create a view, okay? View means, it means that if someone visits um, WW code, okay, that directory, they should see something, okay? I want to create that view, okay? So how do I do that? So the first thing I would do, I will create a function, okay? Very simple one, index and like this return. And I want to return HTTP response 
okay http response and in that http response i'm gonna say welcome to moment put python okay something like this so do remember um H uh, this is http response because like user is requesting data and we are responsing uh we are uh giving response with this thing welcome to women who code python okay so all right and you should also do you should also do this request okay so yeah so when i'm using http response i should tell my computer that i need to import this uh thing http response so to do that, uh, I'm here, django.http, import HTTP response. All right. Okay, great. So, okay, so I created my view, okay. But what is the address of this view, okay? How do I reach this view, okay? So to do that, I'll come here in my, so there you can see the one difference that in this, you see this urls.py, but in my application, I don't have this URL, okay? So I need to create this one, okay? So I'll click here, okay? And then I will do this new file. And the name of my file is going to be urls.py, okay? All right. So the first thing I will do is I will write something like this URL pattern, okay? And when you see this uh, URL, patterns okay i'm gonna this is a list okay and okay so url patterns you need to write like this url patterns okay um although this is a variable but it should be like this url patterns now path okay and in the path i will write something like this i will explain what is this okay so okay and then i will write this views dot index okay so there you see two yellow lines, okay? So because I need to import uh, some library. So to do that, I'll come here from Django and from Django dot URLs import path, okay? So now you see, uh, now the yellow underline has gone, but I still have here, so I'm going to do this from dot and from dot import views. Okay. Okay. So now what is this? So Django says that whenever you want to um, write a path or you want to create a path, or I can also say you want to create a URL. Okay. You need to write like this. Okay. URL patterns. It should be URL patterns. Even if I like say URL pattern without S, it will give me an error. And okay, now what is this? Okay, so it means uh, I want. I'm just saying that if someone visits uh, our app, our project or our website www.code.com/slash women who code, then they will see this page. Okay, welcome to women who code Python. Okay, and what is this views dot index? So I'm just like basically telling, go here in my views. Okay, and bring this index file. Okay, index function. And I can also write like this, although it's optional, but you should write like this name equals to index. Okay, so all right. Uh, okay, so I have this import function. Okay, so I've created this URL. Now I should, okay, so this is, so first I created my view, then I created this file urls.py. Now I need to register this URL in my uh in my project okay so here we go i didn't write this at all okay i got this when i created my application when i created like when i said start project okay i got this so here i am so admin admin dot site and urls so i can come here and i can say path and i can say okay whenever so i'm just telling my woman who code project that whenever you see um women who code python okay send all those requests to me okay to this application and there i'm gonna say include and in here i'm gonna say women who code python dot urls okay 
now again you see this uh, yellow underline so of course i need to uh, import this thing so i will come here and i will do this include okay so yeah okay all right so i did that i can also okay that's cool now let's go back in my terminal and all right Oh my God. Okay. So I closed my virtual environment. So I need to reactivate that one. So CD environment and then scripts slash activate. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, okay. Environment scripts activate. Okay. Let me go back and let's try this one. Okay. Worked. Now I will activate this activated cls and let's go back to my to this directory learn django and there i'm gonna run this so cd okay one sec cd for men who code and in there i will run this python w, python manage dot by run server and yeah there you go okay so now let's uh click here so here in here okay you may not able to um like maybe it's too small for you it's okay so basically i'm just saying this okay ww code python okay so when i do this you can see that i get this thing So if I want to change something, I can just go back, all right, and I can change my, what is that? This, uh, in my views, okay? I can change the string. Now, let's do this again. So def, let's say, again, I want to create something, okay? Um, let's say, I'm gonna say, applaud, okay? Request. And when I say this written, um, not like all of the times, but yeah, sometimes like whenever we are like doing some changes, we should start and stop our server. And yeah, so we should like so stop our server and then start it again. Yeah, we should do that. So applaud request written. So this time I didn't uh, stop my server. Okay, as you can see. So HTTP request, HTTP response, and there I say, upload definitely. Okay, so you can see, easy peasy, you can see the same thing, I'm doing the same thing, okay? So HTTP re request, <clears throat> response, request, I'm sorry. And okay, so I need to register this address. How do I see this like upload Stephanie, okay? I need to create an address, okay? So I'll come here in my urls.py, okay? Do you remember this urls.py is in my um, is in my uh, application, okay? So I'll come here, comma, and then I'll do this path. And then I'm gonna say a plot and then views dot and the name of my function is a plot okay so a plot and then the name is equals to plot like this hmm. so no need to get confused because like maybe you are thinking like okay do i need to create my uh, the function name should be like equals should be uh, should be upload okay if the url is upload okay it is not like that it could be really anything okay so yeah so upload and views dot upload name upload okay so i registered my url here so okay let's try okay i didn't stop and start my server okay so let's do that okay slash upload and when you do uh, and when i do this you can see the page not found okay so let's go back 
uh, it says using the URL configuration defined in uh, Django, try these URL pattern in order. Okay. So as you can see that uh, it was not there. Okay. Uh, what was the name? Okay. Um, all right. So let me go back. Stop my server. How do I stop my server? Control C. CLS. And let's run it again. Okay, great. Now I'm here. Do this. Okay. Oh, let's see what is the spelling. A woman who code Python applaud, name applaud. Didn't match any of these. Okay, so let me see. Applaud and views dot applaud. Name equals to applaud. Um, and in the views, it okay. I don't need to come here. Um, and I registered my URL here. Okay, maybe this spelling is correct. Let's try again. Um, When I do this, okay, uh, no problem. I can do I can do something like the this one. Just give me a moment. Mm -mm -mm. Views dot by HTTP response applaud Stephanie request HTTP response. Everything looks fine to me. So just one sec, I should do something here in my URLs, maybe. I sh should have this thing, okay? So, yeah. So I did this, okay? Now let me go back and let's try this, okay? So there you go, okay? So you need to have this slash thing here, okay? So everything like after WW code Python, if I'm creating another URL, okay? So I will able to fetch that view, okay? So what I've done here uh, is this like WW code, Python, and this slash, okay? Earlier it was not there and it should be there like this, okay? So yeah, that was that's why uh, I was unable to get that view, okay? Because of this slash. So yeah, so th this is the way you can create um, views for your uh, you can create views and then you can add your url patterns here okay all right so the next thing uh, we need to do after this okay and let's um, any question any uh, any confusion okay so i created this thing and we can also create let's say for example i'm searching for a page which is not there okay and uh, of course, it doesn't make any sense that let's say, for example, I want to have, um, I want to create an HTML page. I want to have an image there. I want to do, uh, I want to use CSS, okay? And I won't be able to do that if I do something like this, okay? So to do that, what I will do, so if I want to render an HTML web page, okay? And uh, there I'm just like rendering this thing, welcome to WW Code Python. So to do that, I will just come here in a uh, request and then uh, so the first thing I would do is I need to create uh, that HTML file. Okay, so I will come here in my woman who code Python folder and in there I'm going to click here and in this then I will do this new folder and in this new folder I will create this templates. Okay, so you're going to keep your like templates like html and css uh not css html here okay so i do this templates and after creating templates i'll create another folder in here which will be ww code python and why do i do that because like it will be like easier for uh, django to look for this thing uh to look for uh my to look for the HTML page in here, okay? 
So yeah, so in here now I'll create a page, new file, and it could be like this index.html. And when I'm here, I can, I can write like this HTML head, um, head, and then my body. And in here, I can do something like this. Okay. So I'm going to say, welcome to W2 code Python. All right. And in here, I can say, welcome. All right. So I created this HTML page. Now I want to render this HTML page. So how do I do that? I'll come here in my views. And instead of saying HTTP response, I'm going to say render. And uh, then in here, I'm going to use this thing request. And here I will mention the path. Okay. So the name, so the path name could be, um, um, it will be like this ww code python slash index.html. So it should be like this ww code python index.html. Okay, cool. So render and request. I need two uh two parameters here, request and this 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 is the path of my file. And yeah. So okay. Okay, let's come here. And when I'm here, uh, I need to go back. And when I do this, you can see that I'm getting this welcome to WW code Python. Okay. I I'm able to render my HTML here like this. Okay. Now you uh, now, of course, this is the way I will have my HTML here. Now, uh, maybe I want to add like some CSS. Okay. So to do that. So I'll come here in my ww code python folder i'll create another folder called static okay and in the static again i'll create another folder the it could it could be ww code python all right so okay so what is the difference like why do i have templates and static okay so we keep our static files means there we are not gonna um use any python uh, any Python logic. Okay. We won't write any Python in these files static. Okay. So we, you will keep your images in this folder static slash, uh, women who code Python folder and, um, uh, your CSS files. Okay. And your JavaScript JavaScript files would be there. Okay. So in the WW code Python, I'll click there like this and I'll create a new file and the name of the file, let's say it is style dot CSS. All right. So when I say this style.css, now I will write something. So let's say H1 has this background color black and the color is white like this. Okay. So now I need to tell my index.html file that I have this uh, CSS file there. Okay. So to do that, uh, I need to do this thing. Okay. Um, I need to come here <clears throat> and I need to do this thing, curly braces. Okay. And I will have these percentage sign like this, and then I will write static. Okay. And then I will write load. Okay. So I write like this low, uh, static load. Maybe I should, I think I should write load static, load static. Okay. And here I will link my CSS. So link CSS. And when I'm linking my, when I'm linking my CSS, um, I will do something like this. Um, so it would be like this. Curly braces like this, and I'll have my percentage signs and then I will write static static. And in there, I'm going to write, um, just give me a moment. First of all, as you know, that I should use this thing instead of double, uh, double quotation marks. So double code 
python slash and it would be style.css style.css like this static and for my no code python style.css so i will write like this all right so okay just give me a moment All right, so we are done. Let's come here and let's do this. Okay, not applied. So I need to rerun my server, CLS. And when I do this, and let's come here. Okay, so you can see that I'm able to get my CSS. Uh, I'm able to link my CSS like this, okay? So let's go back and uh, okay, the st uh, the st uh, the style.css uh, file looks like like um, even if you are creating like simple web projects with HTML and CSS, you will write like this. But the difference is, uh, you need to do something like this: load static. Okay, if you want to load static files, if you if you want to tell um, um, your HTML file that you want to load these files. Okay, you want to tell Django to load these files. So there, you need to do this load static and in the link uh, you need to write like this okay so ample uh, the percentage sign static space and then you will write like this okay style dot css all right so there you go now okay so i'm able to do that now let's say for example i want to create um an error page okay maybe if someone uh if let's say if someone is doing this, okay, so they will see this page not found and 404 error, okay. So I want to show something else instead of this, okay. So to do that, I'll come here and in my views. So first I'll create that view. I'll create the function. So I'm gonna come here, def, def, and let's say, Def and let's say error. And in here, I'm gonna say request and return. And then again, I want to render an HTML page render. And when I do that, I will say that I will have my request here. Then in here, I will say one and slash, I will say, okay, the name of the page could be like this, my error dot HTML. All right. It looks quite similar to this. Okay. So we are rendering basically a page. So, all right. Okay. So now I'll go there um, in my urls.py. I need to register that URL, but before I do that, I'll make uh, my my error dot HTML page, and in there I'll do this my error dot dot HTML HTML like this. All right, cool. So my error dot HTML page is here, and I'll do something here. Uh, maybe let's do this HTML at um error page not found page not found i can do something like this page not found and in my body i'll have uh, let's say for example um, uh, uh, um i can say <clears throat> something like this uh, this is not available okay this is not available so i will do this thing and okay i'll do that later let's uh come here in my views so this is my view okay so i need to create url for this so i'll come here in my path and in the path i will do something like this str 
and something like this. And uh, I can write like this, let's say, if I'm expecting an integer, okay. So let's say this, and then I will write this views dot the name of my function and the name of my function is this error. So let me come here and let's have this error and name equals to error, okay? So I want to use I want to use uh, this thing uh, as uh, the name if I want to use somewhere. So I can uh, I can fetch this data from my user, and uh, I can do this by doing this. So I can come here in my my error uh, in my views. So I can say name, and then if I want to use this, okay. So I'm rendering this thing. So I'm gonna do this thing. I will have my dictionary here and I'm gonna do this name and it will be equals to name, okay? All right, I'll explain what is this. Let me come here. Uh, I'll close this myer.html file and in the body, I'll do something like this. This is not available. There is there is something wrong with this, with this, and with what? So I'm gonna write name like this, okay? So this is sort of a like placeholder, okay? Name, so, all right. So let's see. Okay. All right, so let's run it. Okay, working. So when I do that and and when I type something which is not there, I'll get this page not found. This is not available. There is something wrong with this, okay? Uh, with this thing, okay? So now I won't see that uh, like 404 page not found error. Okay, I'll, I'll, I will have this, okay? So, okay, so now what is this, okay? So if you want to like get something from the URL, okay? So, and if you want to use this thing, okay? Uh, I can do something like this, okay? So what is this name? This name is this thing, okay? So I'm getting this name from here and this name is equals to this thing, okay? This name, so I'm using this name there uh where in my my error.html name okay so if i change this if i say something else okay let's say let's say wrong url or maybe something like that okay so there i will write wrong okay i will i will not write name okay and so again um this name is coming from here okay and this wrong I'm using this wrong there in my HTML file. So let's do this name. And now I can come here in my URLs in my here. So, okay, there is something wrong here because I should write like this. Um, title and control X, control V. Add, okay, great. So let's go here and let's reload this. Okay, this is not found. There is something wrong with this. All right, cool. So like if I type something like this event, okay. And this is, uh, we don't have this URL. Okay, so they will see this thing. All right, so it would be like sort of uh, beneficial if we keep like some links there, okay. Uh, so we can do that. So let's say I have a link and let's say home and again, another, I have another link, okay? So whenever I have something like this, I can I can like, uh, I can give like, I can mention dynamic URLs instead of, instead of like putting like uh, the static URLs, okay? I can say something like this. 
um, this thing URL. And in there, I will say, uh, what is the name of my URL? Uh, URLs uh, index upload and error. So we can we can do that. So where is my file? So I'm gonna call index. And I'm skipping that. Okay, because there is something wrong with this thing. Mm. Um, one sec. There is something wrong with this URL index. Uh, URL, normally we write like this. We can also write like this, um, let's say the, the URL and then I'll say slash the event, the home, okay? But it should be something else. And I'm unable to recall that. Um, it should be. Uh, um, it should be a href and the URL. Let me see if I have something in my notes. Um, uh, maybe I should do a Google search. Just give me a moment. This is the dynamic URL. Okay, so let me see if I have something. All right. Uh, uh, okay, so I think uh, we should write like this. Percentage and then URL. And then I will write like this, um, like this, index. Now I think it should work. Okay, great. Now I'll do the same thing for this one, okay. I always do this mistake because like for me, like I think like it should be a colon there. So it doesn't make really sense for me. So URL and uh, the name of the page it could be like this a plot okay so we should have some space here like this so index and the upload um so yeah please do remember that that it looks like this okay url and space and index okay because like i i think like this that it should be something like this okay but it is not like this so url index and url upload so I will write something here, upload. So when I go there, okay, they will see something like this, uh, home and upload. And if I click home, I'll here, I'm here. And if I click upload, then I'm here, okay? Although this doesn't really make sense. This is not available. There is something wrong with this. Uh, 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 what is, okay. Uh, because of wrong URL, upload, okay. All right, so I can do something like this. So you can uh, create your own uh, 404 error page. All right, now <clears throat> uh, we have done this str and the error page. All right, so what else we can do? So, and also you also know that we can fetch, uh, we can create variables, okay? So there you saw that Whenever you are supplying any information, any data, okay, uh, you should always create, you should also 
you should do this uh, thing. Like you will create a dictionary and in the dictionary, you will do something like this. So render request and the name of your path like this. And in the dictionary, you will have this. Okay, cool. So moving on to, so you can create your style.css and HTML. Uh, before I proceed, if you have any questions, uh, any, any confusion, let me know. Anything you would like to ask? So I have, oh, where is my Zoom screen? Uh, okay. So actually, uh, the difference between Flask and the Django is that sort of you can uh, think like that, that Django gives you everything by default. Okay. And, uh, uh, and in Flask, as you are making your application, as your, uh, as your application is getting bigger and bigger, then you can add on all those things. Okay. So it is something like this. Okay. So you, you bought, uh, you bought your laptop or maybe a mobile phone. Okay. And in that you, you have everything there. Okay. You don't need to install like most of the applications there. Okay. But with the flask, you need to do that. Okay. So generally, uh, like most of the developers, they prefer Django for the bigger projects. Okay. Because like, it is very easier to, uh, like, uh, sort of like, what do you say? to just like uh, scale up, okay? If you want to scale up, it is easier to do with uh, Django, okay? So that's the difference between Django and Flask. All right, so I'm gonna, sh so let me check my slides. So I have my slide here. And so uh, we have installed Django and we also ran this, uh, and you also know that how to use this and then you will get these files and then manage.py run server and you will get this. And uh, then we created an application, women who code Python. And that, oh, okay, the first thing you should do is to register the application there. Um, no, 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 we don't have that. So, okay. So now we have now, uh, so the first thing you would do is to create a view like this, and then we create URL for that view and then register that URL in the project urls.py. Okay. You will like miss like colon or maybe space and maybe like a slash. Okay. And Django will give you, uh, give you errors. Okay. So you need to figure out those things. Okay. So yeah. So then we have, then uh, we ran our server again and then we got this thing. Okay. So the one thing is, <clears throat> I think you already know that in the web server, when we type something URL, okay. Uh, Django mm, checks that URL. Okay. Is this in my like uh, list of uh, list of URLs? Okay. If it is, then my computer will say, okay, go there in my view. And then uh, my user will get the view. Okay, so the first thing Django will check if the URL is there or not. Okay, and then they will do, then uh, it will give this sort of this uh, view and then I'll get this view there. Okay, like this. Um, dynamic URL, we learn how to create dynamic U URL like this uh, string and this name, and then we can store this and this name equals to error. Uh, actually this name and this name is different. Okay, do remember that. So, okay. So we can do this, okay? I yeah. I plan to include this image in my uh, in this uh, uh, web application we are creating now. But I think this image is in my like in my diff uh, another laptop. All right. So okay. So what about the templating? Okay. So what does that mean? What does that mean? So. In my views or in here, you can see 
that in the index.html, you can see this part and this part is quite similar here. Okay. I'm using this part here. Okay. So how to get rid of this? Okay. If I don't want to use that. Okay. So the first thing I should do is to come here in my, so what I will do, I'll create a template for these. Okay. So I'm going to call this one layout.html. It could be really anything, your name, my name, and uh, there we go. So I can do something like this. I don't like this. So now I am here and in here I can say, okay, so we want title for our web pages, this thing, okay. And now here, I will do something like this, um, like this. And there I'm gonna write block body, okay, block body and space. And there you will write something like this um, and block, okay. Sort of like, um, like open HTML tag and closing HTML tag. Okay. And I will also load my static files like this. Load static. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. So now I have this thing here. Okay. Now I want to reuse this. Okay. I don't want to write this HTML again and again. So what I would do, I would just, I would just get rid of this thing. Okay. And uh, then what I will do, I will write like this percent and in there extends. Okay. And uh, space. Okay. And then the name of your application. So here I have this thing, uh, not this thing, double code Python. and slash. Um, then I will say, okay, I want to fetch this layout.html here. All right. And moving on, I will also do this thing and I will also remove this thing. Okay. I'll keep this part only. Okay. Which is different. Okay. Which is going to be different from um, if I compare with this thing. Okay. So this part is going to be different. Uh, this part is going to be different. So I'll keep this part only. So I'll remove this thing and I will also remove this one. I'll see. So let me go back and I'm in my, my arrow.html. And there I will do this percentage. And then here I will write block body like this. And there I'm going to write like this percentage. And here I will write end block. I'll keep this here like this. So block body and okay. Okay, cool. So I can also create a paragraph for this. So now I'm going to keep this thing, control X, control V, or maybe H1. Okay, so there you go. Now you can see my index.html. I'll do the same thing here. So the first, so I can just copy this, okay. So now you know that this is basically same and control C, okay. So Django gives me this like sort of template inheritance, okay. So instead of writing those like boilerplate code, HTML head and the Titan and all those things, even let's say maybe I'm uh, importing like JavaScript files and uh, CSS files, okay. I don't need to do those things in uh, these files again and again. I will do that here in my in my layout.html. So here I'm here. I can see I'm not using my link CSS and in here, I'm going to do like, I'm going to do this, uh, which is like to have these ampers percentage sign not M percent. And then I will say static space. And then this double code Python and the name of my file is style.css. All right, cool. So now we have done that and okay. So let's go to our page. Let me reload this. Okay, it's working. It is working. So that's great. Okay, so I'm able to get this 
thing like this okay welcome to the woman who code python so now this is called template inheritance okay so now you know how to create view and now you know how to create um create this sort of like template inheritance in here so you don't need to do all those things again and again so this is like separation of concern all right so moving on so i'll close this file layout.html i don't need this one and in the url start by i also okay i may need this one i'll close this and my error.html and in the view start by i okay i may use this thing okay so before i proceed uh, do you have any any question any any confusion Anything you want me to explain again? <clears throat> uh, all right. So now what I'm going to do is, let's say, for example, I want to because like right now we are not interacting with our database okay so how do we do that in django okay so you know how to uh, now you know how to um, create your html files your style.css file and even if you are using your javascript file you can keep your javascript file in static folder and uh, and you also know how to create dynamic urls okay so okay so moving on let's see how to um how to interact with our database okay so for that, we need to come here in models.py, okay? So the, so the thing is, so it is like this. So in models, okay? So every model.py will have class, okay? We'll have a class. And in this, I will create a class. And that class will help me to uh, make a model, okay? And my Django will create rows in the tables uh, in in my database, okay, um, automatically. I don't need to do that, okay. So let's do that. Uh, let's see how to do that. So the first thing, uh, when you want to create a class, you will write like this class, and you will do something like this event, okay. And uh, when you do that, <clears throat> when you do that in here in the event, um, you will write models dot model, okay, like this. And here we go. And let's say, first of all, I would like to mention event name, okay? Or maybe just say name, okay? Equals to, so I'm using this models dot, okay? This module, it is somewhere. Uh, I'm importing that module, models dot. Now I want to set that it will have this care field, okay? And the maximum length of this care field, um, max length and the maximum length, let's say it is 64. So, you know, like whenever we create like database, we, uh, we mention all these things that this is the name of my column and this is the data type and all these things, okay? So I'm doing that uh, using Python. So now I'm going to create this like speaker equals to models dot. Okay. There again, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'll just copy this here. The same thing. You can change this to 64 to something else, whatever you like. Now I will also do this date equals to and models dot. Okay then i'm going to use this date field okay so yeah so okay so the first thing is like we are just um, we are just saying that we have something we have a column name speaker in the date okay and in our database we will save uh, all these events okay and then we will uh, then we will view then we will view this event on our web page okay so let me show you my slide. So now you know how to create. Okay, there is one thing left, Python conditionals. Okay, so, okay, I'll come to that later, Python conditionals and loops. So I'm doing this uh, models, okay? 
So it would be like this event name models dot care field max length and all these things. So I'm creating this event here. So let's come here and all right. So now after doing this, okay, I want to tell my um I want to tell Django that look, I have done these changes, okay. So and I want to migrate this thing, okay, to my database. So I'll come here, I'll close my server, CLS, and I will run this code, which is this Python manage.py. And uh, when I uh, Python manage.py, then I will write like this make migrations, okay. And you will see something here, okay? After this init.py. So, okay. So the so my code is python manage.py, okay? And make migrations, okay? And when I hit enter, uh, 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 I, okay, sorry. Let's do that, okay. So my cursor is here because when I hit enter, you, will, you can see that uh, it says migration of women who code uh this thing migrations initial.py and create model event okay so we created this event okay and if i come here uh near to this um right now it is not there okay so i want to do i want to do something after this okay so i created this uh thing okay now i want to migrate this thing and how do i do that <clears throat> sorry so cls and uh, to migrate this, I'll use this Python manage, Python manage dot py migrate. And when I do that, you can see, okay, all these uh, migrations, okay, running migrations and all these things, okay. So, okay, okay, that's cool. So, let me go back to here. Okay, why it is not interesting okay i have this file here <clears throat> sorry so here you can see django created this file for me okay uh using that uh class okay so you can see uh for my sql for my database okay so id models big auto auto field name speaker and date okay all these things have been created by my django okay so now how do i use that so if I want to use that, and if I, maybe if I want to create, um, save something in this database, okay? So how do I do that? So I'll do something like this. And in here, I'm gonna say Python manage.py. And now I'm gonna say shell, okay? So when I do this, I get this interactive shell, okay? So the first thing I would do is that I will say from women who code, Python, bring all the models, okay? And when you bring all the models, um, um, import, import specifically event. Okay, cool. And okay, now it's there. Now I want to create, I want to create uh, an event, okay? So the event goes like this, event. And let's say the event is in, um july so now i'll have this thing here like this <clears throat> sorry name and uh, when i do something like this i can do something like this name and uh, in the quotes i'll keep the name of my event so let's say introduction to blockchain okay introduction to blockchain comma and in here i'm gonna write speaker so speaker is going to be let's say for example alice and then a uh, date so i need to mention the date here so it will be like this so the uh, so you need to remember the year will come first like this <clears throat> if you do otherwise you will get an error and 08 and let's say 08 okay okay it looks good to me so let me see first of all let me 
check my model. So I'm using event here. Okay, name, speaker, and date. And I think I should not use uh, one sec. Let me come back here and I'm going to change these. It should be equals to. So equals to and equals to <clears throat> and name. So name equals to introduction to blockchain and speaker and date. Okay, cool. And I get this error. Okay, equals to or uh, there were in, in syntax error. Uh, oh, okay, I get it, I get it. Okay, so let me do this again, okay? So what I need to do is because like I'm creating an I'm creating an object, okay? And so whenever we are creating an object, I should I should write like this, okay? So I should write like this event, okay? It should be like this, okay? So moving on, enter. Now it worked. So event July dot save. Now I'm saving this event and when I say, <clears throat> sorry, when I say, uh, when I save this event, okay, how do I like retrieve uh, this event? How do I know that this event is there in my database? Okay. So I can do something like this event dot. Okay. Then I will say objects dot all. And when I do this event dot objects dot all and the brackets. And now you know that I have one event there. Okay. I can create another event. Let's say it is uh, 18. And let's say this one is Avril. And now let me go come here and let's say introduction to <clears throat> introduction to what? Let's say Mm, let's say Django. Okay. okay, so now I am here. Okay, the name of this uh, should be different. So let's say it is one sec. Oh my God, I lost my changes. Okay, let me do those again. So it would be like 18 and it should be Avril like this. And Direction to blockchain. Eighteen. And Avril. Okay, let me go up and let's say introduction to Oh my god, my cuts. One sec. <clears throat> Let me do like this event June equals to I'm creating an event and in this this is the name of the event. Um introduction to Django and Event name introduction to Django. The spelling is incorrect. Intro. Introduction to Django. Something like this. And in here, I will say speaker name. I will mention the speaker name. Speaker equals to avril and then i will do this date equals to um here two zero twenty two and then the date zero eight eighteen okay okay it worked so i need to save this one event june like this and then i will do this save Okay, so when I do this and now 
I, if I run this, now you will see that there are like two events, okay? Event object one, event object two, okay? Uh, here I'm unable to see like event object one, okay? It is not that intuitive, okay, for me to know that what is this and event object, what is this, okay? So I can change this, okay? So how do I change this? So I can do something like this. I'll, I can create a function, okay? Um, double underscore str like this one sec and there we go i'll do something like this and in here i'll i'll write self and then here i will return something so i'm gonna return like this so i'm gonna call i'm gonna say <clears throat> self dot event uh it would be like this event na uh, name will be presented by will be presented by i'll have my placeholder here self dot speaker will be presented by and there we go and here you will write on mm, here i will write my date self dot date all right. Okay. It looks good to me. So let me save this. I don't need to save this file. It is like I have this option auto save. So, okay. Exit this shell. CLS. And let's come here again. <clears throat> and now I'm going to say from women who code Python. And in there, I want to import, sorry, I should say this, models and import event. And when I do that, I will say event dot object, objects dot all, like this, event dot objects dot all. And when I do this, you can see that now, instead of like, uh, earlier we was getting like event one and event two. Now we are now I have this thing introduction to blockchain will be presented by Alice on this, and uh, the second event is introduction to Django will be presented by Avril on this. Okay, so now we have this thing um, here. Okay, so we can save uh, more um, uh, more events like this. Okay, but it is not like it is like very tedious to do like to come here and to do this okay we will have something else django uh like you have better options okay so let me go back <clears throat> and uh, i'll create first of all i need to create view if i because obviously we won't show this in our shell okay user won't be able to see a uh, user won't be able to see this on our uh, on our shell okay so we need to create a view for them so i'm going to say I will say def event. Okay. So def event, I will have my request here and uh, then return. What do I want to return? I want to render a page. And uh, when I render a page, I put my request uh, thing here. And in here, I will say www code python slash. And there will be a page called event.html. And we will create that in a moment. So request www code Python. And we are also expecting something, which is this. Because we are fetching some data from our database. And it looks like this, okay? So I can do something like this, events and event, okay? So, or maybe I should say something like this, okay? The one we have done there. So I'll do this thing, event dot objects dot all, okay? You have seen that I use uh, this thing, event dot objects dot all to bring all of my events there, okay? So there you see a uh, yellow line. So what does that mean? Uh, it means I need to, uh, I need to uh, import this one, okay? And how do I import this one? So I'm gonna say from dot models, and I'm gonna import this one and this is event, okay? So now that uh, yellow line has gone. <clears throat> okay, now, so now let's create an HTML page. Here I am, 
and in my new file, I'm going to call this event dot HTML. Okay. So I have this thing. So in here, what do I want to do? First of all, I'll do some copy and pasting here. Okay. So I'm going to copy. Although when you're learning, it is not a good habit to copy. So extend. So, okay. This, this part is different. Okay. I know. So I'm going to have something else. So let's say, for example, in the H1, I will write events. Okay. Or maybe we can say our upcoming events, something like this, our upcoming events, something like this. And in here, after this, I will create an unordered list. And in the unordered list, okay, I will have this loop, okay, here. So how do I write loops in Python? in here in my HTML, okay? Must be a new thing for you. So I'm gonna say this for event in events, E-V-E-N-T-S events, for event in events. And then uh, I'm gonna have this ally tag here, okay? And in this ally tag, I will have something like this. Um, let me copy this from my models. I'm going to copy this and so whenever I need, whenever I want to write, um, okay, this should be a placeholder instead. So I should write like this maybe. Um, so the placeholder is like this. So there I need to write something like this, like event dot event dot speaker. Uh, event dot name. So first of all, I should say this event dot name and will be presented by and there I will write event dot uh, 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 that is name. So it will be speaker and will be presented on then I will mention the date. So event dot date. So event dot name will be presented by this. So these are placeholders. Okay. So what is this events? So if you come here in my view, so you will see events. Okay. So in the events we have are all those um, events. Okay. Because I'm calling the, all those events like this event dot objects dot all. And in the event dot HTML, now I'm running this loop. Okay. So no, uh, as you know that we write something like this. Yeah, yeah, I'll share the slides. If you want these slides, I can share these slides right away. So event in events, okay, event dot name will be presented by event dot speaker on event dot date. Okay. So all right. So now I need to register my um this URL here. Okay. So comma path and I'm going to do this. Okay. So it will be like this event and views dot event and name equals to event. And I should keep this. So the dynamic URL should come uh, after all the URLs like this event dot views dot event and the name is event okay all right that's cool so now let's come here and my close my shell cls now i'm here so let's see manage dot pi and i need to run the server so run server like this Oh, okay. There is no error. Cool. So now let's go. Let's come to our event page. Okay. So earlier I was getting this. This is not available. There is something wrong with this event. So when I do this, I get this thing. So invalid tag on line five event expected and block. Did you forget to register load this tag? Okay. No problem. So let's go back. There's something wrong in here. Mm, okay. No problem. So let me go back. 
I must have done some and block block body. Uh, it looks good to me. Oh. Oh, okay. And there is also one thing I should have spaces. Let's read on my server. CLS. Call. Okay, still. Um, expected end block. I have my end block there. What is wrong? Um, let's come here. Extends and www.layout.com are upcoming. Our event and events. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I get it. I get it. So whenever we write, um, like whenever we create loop or whenever we put any like if condition, I need I should do this thing, which is this. Okay, so I should tell my Python that I want to end this. Okay, so end. And there I will write for, okay, like this. So event in events, okay. So I should write like this, okay. If you are close, if you're writing a if and else statement, then you should also do this, okay. Now it should work. I need to read under my page. Control C, CLS. Hmm, let's see. This E V E N T. Okay. So it is and for ampersand sign the block body and everything looks good to me. Or extends is also okay, event in event. Or let me control X. E V E N T and where I tag on line five. Line five. Okay, I think I should write, I should I need to write like this for event in events. Cool. Okay, now you will have this thing. So our upcoming events, so you will see something like this. Okay, so now in the chat, now we can do something else because like uh, we are not going to um, write all these things in my uh, using shell. Okay, so we have something else. So to do that, I will come here, control C, CLS. And now I'm going to do this Python manage and um, uh, this like dot pi. And then I will write something like this um create and then i will write create super user okay so we have this like django gives us this sort of like a dashboard okay from there i can uh, from there i can make all these uh new events okay so when i do that manage uh manage.py and create super user and okay so it says what's your name so i say okay an email address. So I'll mention my email address here. So I'm gonna do this. And the password. So I'm gonna say one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I need to bypass this thing. Okay, that's cool. So now I can come here and I can click here, admin. So you will see something like this. Okay, so I need to restart my server. My one sec. Control. So, oh my God, I closed my, okay, no problem. So it would be like this environment and then scripts. And then I need to activate my, this thing, CD and this thing. CLS, then I will write Python manage dot manage dot pi and run server. Are you in? Okay, there we go. 
why it's that it says no file or such okay cls cd i need to move here and then i need to write like this manage dot by arduino server okay so now let's go there and let's run this and instead of like this we will do something like this <clears throat> So there you go. You can see like I have this uh, thing where I can type my username and my password is one, two, three, four, five, six. So there you go. Okay. I have this panel, but you don't see the events here. Okay. So to do that, we need to do one more thing, which is to come here and I will come here in my admin.py. Okay. And there I will register this um, this model. Okay, so I'm gonna say admin dot site dot register, and in register, um, in register I will say the I will write the name of my class event. Okay, so when I'm saying that I need to import that thing. So I'm gonna say models models and to import and I'm I will write like this okay so now let's come here let's reload this okay so now when I reload it you can see I have this event okay so when I click here and now you can see all those events and let me keep my events here like this I'll remove this thing from there and event okay i think my server is not running maybe so okay now i'm here so if i want to add an event i'll come here so let's say um let's say something introduction to introduction to um let's say quantum And speaker is, uh, let's say, Sarah. And now I can pick the date. Why my date is there? One sec. Let me do this thing. Okay. Now I can, now I think you can see that. So in the dates, you can uh, select the date like this. Okay. And you can save like this. And let's see. Um, Okay, my server is already running. So it is, okay, it should be this thing. So now you can see uh, that event is here. Okay, introduction to quantum will be presented by Sarah on June. Okay, so you don't need to go there in shell and you can just come here and you can add new events like this. Okay, I didn't create this admin panel. This admin panel is uh, created by Django itself. Okay, so yeah, so I can just come here and I can write anything here okay um anything anyone and if i save this you will see this thing here okay i can also delete this if i want to so i can i come here and i come here and if i want to delete this <clears throat> i can delete all these things delete selected events go and there you go okay okay i i think i need to rerun my server okay i need to do this okay so there you go so let me share the slides with you <clears throat> um copy the link somewhere so let me just come here one sec Just give me a moment. We are actually done. So if you have any question, anything you would like to ask, please go ahead and ask. <clears throat> Thanks for joining in today. And I'm gonna share the slide. We are copy. 
so there you go to everyone i'm <clears throat> <clears throat> so when I said that quickly, you can see like in one hour, okay, including like uh, when I was like debugging, when I did mistakes, okay, including that uh, time, we were able to create something like this, okay, we can also insert images in that, okay, and yeah, you can, so you can create your applications quickly with Django, if you know. So in this, when you are going through it, okay, you have all these things. So you can you can um, just compare your commas, and if, even if you are doing this, even if you are doing, uh, yeah, I'll do that later. I'll do that later. So yeah, so admin dot site dot register event. You need to register event. So yeah. Any question, anything you may have. Uh, thanks, all of you who joined in. <clears throat>